Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. How are you doing? What a weekend that were, eh? Wow, what week really? Some, some week, some weekend. Have you got your flasks? <laughs> so you might need two today. I've got pages and pages of notes. I'm sorry, I think. If we do keep this under an hour, I won't be taking evens anyway, so yeah. Have your flask ready, get comfy. And here we go. Right, I think it's only right we'll start off just by wishing Graham Lee and his family all the best. That's That sounds bad, what's happened to him. He's in a bad way there. And yeah, let, let's hope he's all right. Hey. Other news, Marine National is been a bit of a change of plans by the sounds of it. Trainer's a bit worried about the ground there at the moment, so he's talking about taking in a beginners at Leopardstown at Christmas, then I'd imagine it's on to the DRF and then Cheltenham. a few points to consider with this um, yeah just backtracking slightly so what we're going to do today we'll review all uh, the action since I last saw you there starting on Thursday so we've got Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday I've got two 20 to 1 bets for Cheltenham and a little multi, I say the multis I don't normally, I just, that's a personal thing to people, but yeah, this one's kind of linked in, so I just thought I'd give this a mention. All right, Marine National. Aside from the fact, you know, I've got, I just wonder if he's going to take to fence. Uh, long story short, I said before, I see this horse as a proper sharp two mile hurdle. I think that's what he is. And, you know, I just have reservations if he's going to bring that over the fences. Not saying he won't, but, you know, it's a game, isn't it? You have your views and you kind of back your views. And sometimes you're wrong, sometimes you're right. It's just the game, isn't it? And that's just my view there. But aside from that, leaving that to one side for the moment. Going into an arcle on the back of two runs over fences wouldn't really be my concern here. I don't know if people, maybe that would concern some people, but El Fabiolo did that last year. I might be wrong, but I think Well Chief did it on the back of one run, did he? I'm not sure, maybe. So, that's not really so much of an issue for me. But there's a couple other things to consider, I'd say. Firstly, he can't be missing this Leopard's Town for any reason at all. He can't afford to miss it. If he steps on a stone or, you know, if the ground came up heavy, bottomless, he can't afford to miss this one because he's running out of time then and what I think he would be tempted to draw stumps and then go to the champion hurdle with him 
if that happened, if he had to miss this for any reason. So there's a possibility of that. And the other thing is he's always had his runs kind of spaced out this source. I mean, he went to Cheltenham last year, he didn't, you know, he just ran in the Royal Bond and then he just went straight to Cheltenham. And if you look at his form, they're all spaced out, I think 53 days is the quickest he's reappeared. Now, I don't know if that's by design, if there's a reason for that with a horse, but this is a very different approach which would worry me, do you know, when you're asking a horse to do something different, I think that's, you know, and it'd be, you know, if he does Leopardstown, DRF, and then Cheltenham, he's asking him for three runs in Seventy days, maybe less than that, maybe sixty odd days is three runs in sixty odd days, and he's only ever had, you know, the fifty-three day breaks between runs as a minimum. So that's something to consider. Of course, another possibility is. He takes to fences like a duck to water, you know, trots up at Leopardstown, goes on to the DRF, smashes up Fassar Vega and he goes there odds on. That is a possibility as well. But yeah, just this change in plans does open up these other possibilities as well now. Right, so that's that. Now that combined this has been bugging me for a little while and I think this has just tipped me over the edge. So the first bet I'm putting up straight off before we get into the review and everything is a point each way on in the pocket, 20 to one for the Arkle. Now, so it's not just the Marine National news there. I look at the markets and I think they've got this bang wrong. Is big top price 10 to 1 for the Turners, top price 20 to 1 for the Arkle. I'm 90 something percent sure this fella goes Arkle. I just think the pricing's all wrong. Um, maybe you've got some stronger horses there at the front of the market in the Arkle. Maybe that's skewing it a little but still I think that's wrong so I know Fassar Vegas are big, one of our, big, our biggest hitter you know but still it doesn't you know because he's our biggest hitter then it makes sense to cover him a little as well a pound e point each way 20 to 1 in the pocket Another good reason for this bet is like normally I wouldn't be into each way bets this time of year, but the Arkle is a bit of an exception. So every race is different, and you might be nicking an extra place here as well. It could cut up into less than eight runners quite easily. So you might just nick an extra place, which kind of compensates a little bit for getting. You know, a fifth on or fifth first three all these races, isn't it? So, you know, it's not bad if there's only six or seven runners there. You've got the first three places, and that could easily happen. Now, a few reasons why I think he's just going to run in the Arkle. Even if even if Fassar Vega smashes him up or Marine National, I think he'll go Arkle because at the end of the day, there's not many other horses that can come into this race. I mean, you've got Illite, Tom, Blood Destiny, maybe a couple of Willies, Mister Policeman. 
the end of the day, Willie's second strings in these grade ones haven't got the best record anyway. In the pocket, finished in front of Elite Tomps at Cheltenham, and I'd be quite amazed if he didn't take to fences better than Elite Tomps. Blood Destiny, I, you know, I can see him doing well in Ireland, both of those horses, but I couldn't be having him on my mind for Cheltenham after last year. At the end of the day, in the pocket, he was only three length behind Fassar Vega and a little over six lengths behind Marine National. If Henry thinks he's within six lengths of the favourite in an Arkle, he's going to be running in an Arkle. Also, there's the fact it is Henry, and Henry's got a great record in these two mile chases at Cheltenham, you know, Arkles champion chasers he's one of them he'd be more inclined to go for an arkle rather than a turner's additionally additionally to that jp's never won a champion chase he wants a champion two miler and for that reason as well he's more likely to run in the arkle additionally to that you look at the other horses JP's got there, like I mentioned before, say his big four novice chasers. He's got In the Pocket, Corbett's Cross, Yoroko, Factor File. None of those other three are going to be going for an Arkle. They may well cover the Turners and the Browns between them if they all get there fit and well. But none of them are going for an Arkle. This is his only Arkle horse and he will run in the Arkle. So, and then just really to ram home this bit of value we've got offered here at 20s each way. I say the multis are personal to you, but this is how I played it anyway. You might want to change it up a little bit, or you might think I'm talking rubbish like you know I've had a pound a pound a point each way treble we put in the pocket 20 to 1 for the Arkle John Bon 6 to 1 for the champion chase and Jerry Colomb 5 to 1 for the gold cup just to try and take advantage of this sort of little bit of place value we've got for in the pocket and a point each way on that, you you winning is ten to one. So you've staked like on your total stakes, so you've staked two points there. You return twenty two points if those three hit the frame. We don't really think about the win parts. These are we're just going for this place, but unless the first one wins, and then you can maybe start dreaming there. But yeah. I think that's a solid bet, I do. Because, um, like I say, the Arkle could cut up into less than eight runners. John Bond has got one of us to beat. And he's, he's going to be running in that race for that reason. And for the reason, like I say, he's, you know, JP wants a champion two-mile chaser. He's got one horse to beat and anything can happen, can't it? We've seen it before. Defi Desai, Duvan, you know, in this race have flopped at odds on. It can happen and he can take the odd liberty at offence, can't he, El Fabiolo? So he's, he's going to be running in the champion chase. He's got one horse to beat there. I don't think Cheltenham's especially John Bond's track, to be honest. But he's still... Managed to come second in a Supreme and second in an Arkle. I'd expect, I'd, I don't think there's going to be three horses in front of him in a champion chase. Um, possibly Dino Blue could come into this. But, you know, I, I still don't think that I'd be pushing John Bond out to Ryanair 
I think JP had just run them both, you know, because he wants that champion chase. So. Yeah, and Jerry, Jerry's, I can't have Jerry out of the first three in a Gold Cup. I just can't. I can't. So I think them three are really solid. It's the sort of bet I like doing more closer to the time when you get in the better place terms and you've got the non-runner no bet and I've had some success with it adding you know you can have four or five and maybe perm if you up like you know maybe have to win a race and to win another race and just going for them like sort of place angles and yeah I've had some success with that but this far out obviously you're taking a bit more of a risk there you get one out and you're done aren't you it's, it's better like I mean you might consider I told we a few others this a champion hurdle obviously state man and Imperi pass would look good place contenders um, I just they probably will be second and third I just think I've got half an idea Imperi pass you know, constitutionals flying again I just think they've got their eye on that two and a half mile, is it Martel Erdle at the Aintree, Liverpool Erdle, the two and a half mile Erdle at Liverpool at Aintree. You know, I think they've looked at Constitutional in that last year and I think that's his race and I just wonder if he might just leave a little bit on him for that. Incidentally, I think Constitutional will probably duck that race this year. Three week gap, I think he'll go from the champion hurdle straight to Punchestown. Yeah. That's kind of by the by. Um, State man, the yeah, only thing that put me off, I can just see a scenario. Do you know if it came up testing, I think they'd maybe think the only way they could be a constitutional is by outstaying him. So if it did come up really testing, I can see state man being kind of sacrificed to a degree to try and beat up constitutional, soften him up a little bit on the front end, and then they're going to have him pair a pass sort of sat out of the back and try and come through and pick up the pieces there and maybe do him after the last that's just the scenario I can see you'd, you'd need the ground to be maybe have some heavy in it for that scenario but yeah so and and there's just that little chance as well Marine National could come into this if for any reason he has to skip that Christmas race I would say it's quite likely if he did although that's probably unlikely but if that did happen I'd say it's quite likely he's going to go champion hurdle and then you're only fighting for one place between the two um, Love Envoy I couldn't knock anyone for sticking that horse in there in the mare's hurdle she's kind of double figures I think festival winner second tonne to go last year i do think that race is going to be competitive i think willie's going to have two or three wouldn't surprise me if he had the first three here there's all the horses that can come into it it's just going to be a competitive race i think like i say i just and i think she's coming off the back of a small injury so i like I think for these bets you want strong festival form so I'd stay away from like novices that haven't been to Cheltenham before um, yeah I like say the, the champion chase and the Arkle can both cut up to less than 8 runners so you can be nicking I think you're quite likely to be nicking at least one place with that bet um, yeah I've probably talked enough about that now so that's that uh, I've got one more which we'll come to. So that's 20 minutes in nearly, we haven't even started the review. And I've got 
pages and pages here. So. so that's all that. So let's uh, rewind a bit to Clonmel on Thursday. Very heavy ground this. Very heavy. It was hard work for these horses. Two and a half mile listed mares chase. Instit went a good clip early in the conditions, then kind of slowed it right down before stretching again with a mile or so to go. She ran well. She surprised me a little. I thought she would kind of maybe flattered with the form, the end of season form last season. But no, she, she ran well here. Allegory. She put in an extra stride, didn't she, at the first, made a complete mess of that and thought I'm not doing that again and just kind of skied the next fence. After that, she jumped fine. You know, she just frightened herself at the first, I think. Uh, she was sent up to challenge two out and a great leap there she put in and that quickly took her two or three up and she just maintained that all the way to the line. I thought just that little burst However brief, in this ground, were impressive, I did. It's hard to do that in this sort of ground. Um, hard to look good in ground like that. Some sort of flash. It's not a flashy ground, is it? Mascada. Mascada travelled well till about three out, then seemed to empty a bit on the approach to two out. Looked after after that. But not good enough or it did look like she didn't get home in the conditions I'd suggest they're probably going to drop her in trip just worth noting the time was four seconds quicker than Alaho over the same course and distance and she carried two pound more than Alaho obviously this were a race and Alaho weren't really in a race but worth noting anyway yeah, I'd say this were good. I'd say she'll come on plenty for that. And I think in the sort of likely absence of impervious, she sets the bar there for the others to get to. Yeah. I'd like to see her on the next run, because I think she'll take a good step forward from that run. And... I'd imagine the next day she might put in maybe a career best performance. We'll see. We'll see. Well, career best this time of year, like, but you know, I think she might. Well, I think what I'm saying is, I think we'll be able to judge after the next one if she's actually improved upon last season or not, because I think it's quite hard to judge that. But I'd say that we're encouraging. That little burst she showed there. So that's that. So yeah, that were good for us ramblers anyway. We have a little, little bit, didn't we, on the allegory there for the mares. Alaho. Much anticipated return of Alaho. What horse this is. Yeah, it got a little bit warm before the race. Um, okay, he's still got four legs, he can still run and jump. I think some crab is jumping, I thought he jumped fine. I say it was bad ground, hard to look impressive in that ground. He went a pretty kind of even pace through the race, I'd say, and he just had a jog round, didn't he? They were... I think three out or so, Janadul closed up a bit and, you know, Paul had a look there and I don't know if he just did it with his knees or whatever, but he just maybe give him a small list of squeezes and he was soon away and off into the distance, weren't he? I thought that were, that were impressive, I thought, just that little bit there. Uh, Stiff with Tessa weight, but so far so good. 
I would be... Personally, I wouldn't be rushing into Battley Source, you know, I've, I've said that. But I wouldn't knock anyone for doing so, because he's a legend. And if any horse can do what he's trying to do, it's Alaho. So far, so good for Alaho. Yeah, I'd say probably learn more next day, but maybe we won't, because what's going to go with him? I mean, Willie's got most of the two and a half milers, isn't he? So I don't know what opposition he's going to face next time either. So we'll see. I, I can't see him throwing him into a King George. I just, it's too precious. I, I don't think they're going to risk that. But we'll see. Right, uh, up to Newbury then. Two mile novice hurdle will mount. You were touch keen, but not not worryingly so. Um, he was sent on at the second. Flew three out. That was some leap three out, wasn't it? Um, Any one easy. He looked a very different model to the rest of these horses. I thought. He looked very fit, maybe a little on the small side. I don't know if he's going to improve much on this, like through the season. I mean, obviously what he did there were impressive, but yeah, you know, we're novices. I, I like, you like to have us, it's going to keep improving and improving through the season. I think he is just what he is. Uh, I think he's going to look electric around like a Kempton or somewhere like that. Just, this might be controversial, but at the prices, I prefer Django Bay. He's nearly twice the price. And this Jericho, Durapine, I've, I've been close. I've been close to putting him up at. I've just got a gut feeling that's maybe his number one, but we haven't seen him yet. JP's. So I'd, I'd like to see Jericho. I don't know how much longer I can hold back on this horse. Uh, he's at 20s, 25s. I could be, could be Nicky's main one. Yeah, but yeah, in, in a funny way, as impressive as he were, will mount. I wouldn't personally have him on my mind for Supreme, but maybe that's just me. All right, so that's Thursday, Friday. Another good result for us ramblers, this. Stay away, Fay in the three mile novice chase. Prominent from off, jump great, jump great, really good, jump in. Look to be travelling third best, approaching four out, added two out, dropped to third, fantastic leap at the last, stayed on strong to the line and won by a comfy two lengths in the end. Um, yeah, this is, this horse can jump and gallop, can't it? I'd say... If Paul wanted a nailed on festival winner, he could run this in the four miler and I think it'd be it'd be a moral certainty he would. But yeah, he's come out anyway, uh, good for us ramblers. Uh, he's just said this is there's only one race this is going for and it's the Browns. So that's good. Um it'll improve a ton on this. It's a festival winner. He's kind of a bomb-proof Cheltenham contender. I mentioned three mile at Sandown race there and the Corto Star. I'm not sure the Corto Star around Kempton would be his back. His big, strong galloping horse. A little light top of the game. He got beat in the Corto Star, didn't he? Didn't stop him winning here, but... Yeah, I'll, 
I won't be smashing into him at short prices in the courthouse store anyway, put it that way. But yeah, as far as Charlton goes, I mean, he's going to keep going, isn't he? I'd suggest the softer the ground, the more of a stain test it is, the better it will suit him. And yeah, he's he's got to go to the Browns with a live chance there. Yeah, he's, he's going to improve a ton on that. He's a big horse. Um, yeah. He's going to improve plenty on that. And he'll go. Yeah. So, down Royal. 11 out of 14, Gordon. Over the two days. That is some going in it. So, this is his playground. It's only a matter of time, isn't it? He's going to go through the card. It's going to happen. It is. The feather blade in Mare's Novice Hurdle. Two to one. Two to one. She returned. That was a nice bonus, weren't it? Yeah. She beat Bantown Girl, who's rated one two seven by nearly five lengths here. He's well strung out. William Town dancer further thirteen length back in third. She's got that sort of line with dice that you know, that would sort of look favourable to her, but might be a bit dangerous to draw this collateral for. Me. But yeah, in any case that was a good performance. Um she trapped wide early, very keen over the first two started to settle a bit it kind of made a bad mistake at the fourth and that seemed to settle her down in a funny way she got in a nice position after that she closed bantown girl down bantown on the long run to the second last she took it up at the last weren't great there but powered away on the running as is her want um yeah, they were well strung out these. She's she's learning on the job. She's I mean, she didn't really jump left this time, so I think she just scared herself. So it'd be nice to see she'd learnt from that. I'd say she's improved plenty from her first run and she'll improve plenty again. She'll improve a ton again. She's learning on the job and she's getting better and better with every race and I'd say the next day you see her she'll be more professional again she'll probably have a penalty I'd imagine for this mare's novice hurdle but she looks made for the race I'm sure that's the only race you know Gordon's had a few kind of a couple of slim years at Cheltenham he's got a big chance here in the mare's novice hurdle that's where she'll be going I'd imagine and she's going to have a big chance she'll take some whacking in that she'll say she'll eat that hill and it'll take a good one to beat her. It will. Willie might have that good one to beat her, we know. Who knows what he's got, but yeah. I'd say we've done the hard work. We've got her on the side at double figures. Just got to get Paul, Paul's ride. And I'd say we're in a good place there. So that would that good anyway. I love that. That would be great. Uh, the grade three, Jeski, good horse, bottle green hurdle, Irish point, beat Zoe, nearly two lengths. Um, you know, there's some omitted hurdles that have that has suited Irish point, he's got the stamina there. Sat second, sort of four lengths off the leader, Zoe tracked him through. Pace wasn't overly strong. It's sent on on the run to the second last. Zoe tried to conjure up a challenge at the last there, but she was never really getting there, was she? I thought this was a great ride from Jack. It did. I thought he judged it well. Um, good horse, this. Good horse. I'll just... I don't know if he's going to get the three mile in a stairs hurdle. 
He might do, he might do. We don't know until we see, do we? But if he does, he'll take some whacking in that. Because he's got, he's got some speed at two as well. He, he ran Marine National close last year. Um, it's just that kind of, I mean, it, two and a half is probably his trip. And it's if, because you do need to stay three mile and a bit in that stairs hurdle, don't you? You really need to get home after the last. And I'd just not be convinced on that at the moment. But if he goes out and proves he stays three miles strong, I mean, they have got teapot for that race as well. And maybe they've got more that Liverpool hurdle in mind. don't know. But yeah, he, he, he's got potential to develop into a stays hurdle contender. So he's just got that stamina to prove. Uh, two and a half mile beginners found a 50. Yeah, I suggested this horse would have maybe improved a lot from last season for summer grass. It's quite weak last year and he certainly has looked a different horse he's turned inside out jumped off in the lead you know colonel must have sort of win a few lengths most of the way around um just out jumped that rival at every fence nearly um he fenced superbly on debut here maybe exaggerated that perception with the fact that Colonel Mustard can't jump <laughs> can he? so you see every, every fence is taking like two legs out of this of course but, uh, but yeah he, even so he, he did jump superbly anyway I thought the admitted fences were not in his favour you know i will say he were quite weak last year obviously he was out jumping Colonel Mustard all the way and I just thought, is this horse, is this long, long run going to find him out? Like I say, last year, quite, I'd say, a weak sort of finisher. My God. He quickened smartly away and he hit the line hard. This is a different Founder 50 to the Founder 50 we saw last year. Gordon's took this with horses such as Sam Crow, Envoy Allen and Marty Potter before. He's grown up a lot. And he's the other bet. Yes, we'll have a point on him for the Turners at 20 to 1. I know we've already kind of got two about there we've got a point on mr policeman at 20s and we've got a point on factor file at 14s or he may have got 16s but 14s it don't matter it don't matter we're just laying some nice foundations here and i'd suggest we, we've got six points in the recycle bin there's plenty of room in that recycle bin that's going to get fuller but it's fine, you, you wait one winner and you're paid for all them. And then we start making. And we want really factor file to go to the Browns, I'd prefer, but we'll, we'll see. Now you, you look, <sighs> I'd say that putting this back a week I think Gordon's got a couple here. I think this guy would have been the Drinmore. And the novice hurdler we get to would have been his Royal Bondos. But they've just got the three week gap now, I think. So that might. We'll have to see how they come out of this. I might just come a little quick. We'll, I don't know. We'll see. But I think the Drinmore is the plan. Um is likely to bump into let's be clear about it there now, firstly I don't think Drinmore 
uh, us as winners have got a good record at Charlton. That that, that don't bother me at all. Um, you know, Royal Bond Horses didn't have a good record at Charlton either. It didn't stop Marine National, did it? So yeah, I don't care at all about that. There's no like I say, you always ask why. There's absolutely no good reason why a Dreamwell horse can't go on and win at Cheltenham. They just didn't. You know, it's just one of them anomalies. That's all it is. Um, yeah. Let's be clear about it. We're impressive last time. And this, I mean, you could maybe chuck um, Sharjo in there as well. Maybe they'll go there with Sharjo. Let's be clear about it. We'll be a good test for him I, I just fell I felt, fell in love with this horse honestly I think this is some horse um, and even even I mean you tell them winners they don't have to get there with a string of ones as long as he runs a big race in the Drinmore even if he lost me a few lengths after running a big race there's no reason why come Cheltenham he can't carry on improving and improve past that horse you know um, because I think what we have got here is a horse on the improve. This is a different horse to last year, and he's going to keep improving through the season. And I think whatever happens, if he goes to more, he will win a massive race, win or lose, and his graph will be like that. Um, obviously, if he wins the more, the price is going to collapse I'd say and if he gets beaten the Dream more but we think he's run a big big race there and they push him out in price we'll just back him again <laughs> so yeah yeah we'll have a point on founder 50 at 20 to 1 I think that's more than fair I like him I like him I do Um, Firefox. <laughs> he had a canter around at one to six. Uh, shock. The yellow clay pulled out. Yeah, I kind of suggested this might happen. The bookies won't like this. They won't. Shame. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. Saturday. Saturday. Aintree. Aintree. Yeah, people. Uh, people are different. You might love these Aintree fence races. I, I, I like them, but the Aintree fences—they're a bit like. Love Island people, aren't they? They look pretty, but there's not much going on underneath the surface there, like, you know, anymore. So, you know, favourite won that race anyway, so. Shame for the bookies, that, eh? That was good. Uh, the race I wanted to talk about, really, at Aintree was uh, the Class 2 hurdle, two and a half mile west Balboa. She was just a pound well in here. Yeah. She weren't especially fluent at times. Pulled well clear on the running. Yeah, Dan's saying stay as hurdle. Now, we've had a few sort of contenders maybe come into this over the weekend. I'd kind of like her in that. I, I think she will stay. I think she will stay. She, you know, she were powerful on the run in here. My concern with her would be the track. The last three runs have been much her best, and they've come at Aintree twice in Kempton, flat as a pancake. So I just want to see her do it at Cheltenham. He did mention the Ralph Keel hurdle. Uh, along with a long walk and I'd say if she proves herself at Cheltenham 
I'd be very interested in it for the stayers then. But just for the moment, I just want to see that first, you know. Uh, she should come on a lot for that as well. Yeah, she should be impressive. I mean, race probably fell apart a bit, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, like her. But, like I say, I just want to see her do it on an up and down sort of Cheltenham. I'd like to see her do it in the Royal Keel. I'd say that's where she'll be going. I don't think she's quick enough for a mess. Um, Gowron. 11.50, Mare's beginners on Money Maker. She looked a good bet, I thought, to make all, and she duly did. But she started well last year, and I think Gordon's got one better at home for the Mare's chase. Halka, Halka de Tabet. Just getting to that stage now, I'll keep checking, you know, to see if she's entered up Halka, because you want these horses to come out, don't you? And she's not entered up yet. You'd like to see her come out in the next few weeks. You just worry if she doesn't, as she might be a bit of a setback or something. But, yeah, I'll be a happy man when I see her entered up. I just want to see her out. And she's one of the bets I'd be most excited about for Charlton. Um... The 2.32 race is the race I really want to talk about here at Gowland. Il Atlantique. The, had that bit of a ding-dong with Firefox last year. Just came off second best. Jumped out here. Made all. Drew clear from second last. Very impressive. This is a stunning looking horse. I think this horse has just grown and strengthened up. Somebody that's done this horse well. This horse has turned inside out. Lovely, big, scopey, chasing type. Stunning horse. I just... There were two horses I kind of fell for that I'd not fell for before. Found a 50 and this fella. Um... Yeah, I, Novice Erdl's Charlton this year, I'm not sure. I'm sure he'll develop into a contender. But I'd be excited to see this horse over a fence next season. Wow. He's going to be something to look forward to over a fence, this horse. Stunning looking horse. Twenty twenty five Turner's winner. You heard it here first. Yeah. Yeah, he's I'll be following him closely from now on. He's he's a stunning, stunning horse this. Just worth a mention Um JP's Raglan Road was seen plugging on into fourth there. He might be one to look out for in handicaps, three mile, three mile handicaps for Henry. Yeah, had these well strung out. That was some performance that, you know, that surprised me. I, I guess he'll probably go Lawless and Ace, something like that. Uh, yeah, he'll be a contender in these races, but if he's your winner at Cheltenham, I'd, uh, he's just. Uh, can't wait to see this guy over the fence. Can't. Uh, Down Royal. Down Royal. I've been off France. Down Royal. Um, two mile one. Made an hurdle down memory lane. Yeah. This is the Royal Bond horse I want about. Um, point to point winner. Won a bumper. And now a maiden. I'd say Derek were keen to take a lead here, settled in sort of second and third and settled quite well. Uh, jumped to the front three out, just sort of hung on to him, hung on to him, travelling all over everything and then put in an extra stride at the last, but, you know, made no difference. Just eased, eased clear by three lengths. Nice looking horse, I'd say he's got plenty of pace. 
and I'd have thought he's Royal Bond bound. Um, this were quite impressive. This were impressive. I thought he were quite quite professional for a, a novice first time up. Like, uh, yeah, looks to have plenty of gears there. I mean, this were a nothing race where he's beat nothing here. He's beat trees, like you know. But yeah, he looks looks nice. So JP, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, he's he's a contender for all these bigger big novice hurdle races. And then the highlight of the weekend has to be. The three mile grade one, Lad Brooks Chase, Jerry Colomb. Because Ramblers were happy about this, weren't we? He finds a way to win. I did say he's just one of those horses, he finds a way to win, and he did. What a race this were, what a race. I mean, this is this is why we, we love jumps racing, isn't it? Three mile chase like that. Top class horses. They were only four in, but you don't need you don't need hundred runners here to have a good race. I was fine when they're this good, and that was just special, weren't it? It were that was special. Um, conflated took them along. Manila Indo and Jerry kind of tracked him through. Jerry had track position there. Uh, no, sorry, Indo had track position there. And Envoy, Rachel just waited and waited with Envoy Allen. Uh, Jerry made a mess of the third. Apart from that, first race against the big boys, he jumped fine. He jumped well. Um, conflated, we know Conflated's better left-handed and he were inclined to go left-handed, didn't he? And, like, Jack, he was always on the wrong side of Conflated, but Manila Indo had track position there. There was nothing he could really do about it. Uh, on the approach to the third last, Conflated, uh, they really quickened the pace, didn't they? This, they asked him, it's like, race on. Two out, Conflated went quite markedly left, didn't do Jack any favours. Rachel just been riding what a race a masterful masterful waiting race on Envoy Allen and she saw a chance she sort of took Minella Indo's position there and she looked the winner coming to the last hell of a ride Jack Jack switched Jerry didn't he and summoned this power pack finish down the middle of the track oh that were good. That was special. It were. Yeah, it were. I think that race took a whole page up. <laughs> and he's gone onto another page. It was that good. Uh, yeah, look, Jerry, uh, he didn't really have the run of the race, did he? And it was the first. His first race against the big boys, he were conceding and race fitness. He'll improve massively for this, and he looks just made for a gold cup, doesn't he? Everything about him looks just made for a gold cup. He's going to relish that three mile, two and a half, that stiff finish. Galloping, I mean, galloping. Galloping will have to be every bit as good as last year, I'd say to beat him and he might be and he might be galloping special isn't he he is we know galloping special but this fella's going to keep him honest anyway um yeah fantastic race that it were it were this this jump season honestly it's got everything it's just it's going to be special it is special already uh envoy allen He'd be going to Rhino, be a big chance again, I'd say. Um, I'd expect maybe he'll put in one of them below par runs now. And yeah, um, he 
turns up in the Ryanair on the day and you could not be crossing him out anyway. Conflated loves Leopardstown going left handed. He's going to run a massive race at Christmas. He has. He's going to improve on this as well. And, you know, if Jerry goes there, it'll, it'll be another great race. But Jerry, he'll just find a way to win again, won't he? He just will. Right, disclaimer here. <laughs> Up to now, right, we've had, like, winning naps. I tend to follow horses have come out and won. Pretty much everything we back for Cheltenham's come out and won. <laughs> but winners up, we kind of, you know, broke these races down pretty well. This ain't this ain't gonna last. This ain't <laughs> don't be getting used to this. Um, I will tell you plenty more losers than winners. We'll go through some lean times, I'm sure. I think I operate at a strike rate of around twenty nine percent. And you, it's just mathematics, probability. Some point in time, on a strike rate around that, you're going to hit like 16 losers in a row. It does happen, it will happen. But yeah, up to now, things are going good, eh? Um, and like I say, some of these Charlton bets, that, that recycle bin will get a lot fuller than it is now. But we will get some nice bets through and we'll have some nice platforms to build on. It's like a it's almost like a savings account, a long-term savings account. The bank might not approve. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is. Um, really, you just want to be coming out of Charlton with plenty of bulging pack pockets, don't you? Bulging wallets, um, you know. So you're just putting a bit away all the time there. And you cash it all in at Charlton. Right, Sunday, nice, last day, We're coming up to an hour, I knew I, we couldn't keep it below an hour. Um, two Mile Maiden, Slade Steel, beat King of Kingsfield, five and a half lengths. He returned a good price here. I think yesterday, I was looking at different forms everybody else I do. Because these Henry horses, I don't know why they were the prices they were. Um, he'd won a point to point, a bumper, and he'd finished third, eight length behind Ballyburn at Punchestown, which looked pretty strong form to me. Um, so he paid Ballyburn a nice compliment here too. We like that, don't we? Um, yeah, King of Kingsfield, he took them along. Um, Slade still settled in fourth um, they went a fair pace here. the field were well strung out with four to go two to go Slade Steel went after went after him five lengths down or so by the time they got to two out Rachel had closed it to about two lengths jumped into the front and the last pull clear on the running it's a nice horse and this was a nice debut Um yeah, he's going to be a contender in the graded novice hurdle race, isn't he? For sure. Gut feeling, heart hearts. I don't think he's going to be winning a Ballymore or a Supreme, but he's going to be a contender in these races. Um, like a lot of Henry's horses, probably improve next season when they go over fences. Um, just worth a mention in 8th beaten 40 odd lengths a horse called Built by Ballymore a Martin Brazzles needs one more run for a handicap mark this horse he's a lovely looking horse he's a nice looking horse and he might just improve massively when he gets into a handicap same connections have gone close the last couple of years, haven't they, in the Coral Cup. Um, he 
he's going to be getting a pretty lowly rating so he'd have to win and win well and maybe more than once to be getting to a cold cup we'll see we'll see uh, I'll be having a play on this fella lining up in his first handicap I would I'd be getting on early he won't be getting on early Two mile three made an hurdle. Henry took this again. Henry and Rachel Mahone's way. Five and a half lengths again. Uh, point to point winner. And this horse came third, beating five lengths to certain Mirazor West. So that's, that's nice for us ramblers too. Uh, chosen witness jumped out. Mahone's moved into second after the second. Sent up sides on approach to the fourth. Tuck it up, jumping that hurdle, and they sort of challenged him coming to the last, but he just steadily drew clear on the running. Jumped really well, this horse. I thought he jumped really well. He will improve for this, and they are both, yeah, both these Henrys will be contending, contesting um, graded hurdles. Um, and yeah, he should make a cracking chase as well, I'd say. And two nice horses going forward, Henry's got there. Right then, the Barberstown, grade three, chase, two mile. Dino Blue beat Phil Draw two lengths. I might have a bit of a bias view in this race, because the girl had let me down for a fourth time. <laughs> Right, Dino sec settled in second, went on four out. So guard were like five lengths behind, approaching two out. He was one and a half lengths behind, two lengths behind, moving well, not touched a twig all the way around. And he came down and I've watched it a few times. I'm not quite sure why. It's quite hard to see on the angle. I think maybe he just got in a bit close and came down a bit funny. He didn't get his landing gear out. I don't, don't know. I don't know. But he jumped great to the left. Would he have won? Let's say I might have a bias view. He'd have certainly been in the mix anyway. He'd have certainly been in the mix. And, you know, as far as the right air goes, that would have been a great run. Um, so I think Willie may go to hurdles now with him he did say that um, don't know because he, he did so well till that point he might give him another chance I don't know but if not he'll be going over hurdles and he's going to try and turn him into stay as hurdle horse don't think this horse gets three mile. I've never seen anything to suggest he's a three miler. But I've been wrong before and he's a classy horse and if he does stay three miles I'd be all over him for stairs. But for me he's gonna go out, he's gotta prove that first. Uh as for the winner, Dino Blue Yeah. Jump well, um Improved a lot at the back end of last season and she looks like she's continued on that upward curve. Nice horse. She's as short as five to one for a mare's chase now and it's just the stamina I'd have concerns about if she's, like I said when we were talking about that mare's chase, you've got to really tough it out from the last. That's a tough old race. You've got to stay two and a half and a bit and I'm not sure she does. So she's got a stamina to prove for me. But again, if she came came out and really, really proved her stamina, then yeah, yeah. But the way she races, I just, yeah. I'd, I'd be against her at the moment that race I'd much rather at the front two be on allegory I would um, 
we'll see. Right, last race. Made it to the last race. <laughs> well, there is probably plenty to talk about in this race. Uh, two and a half mile beginners won by Grange Clare West. He beat Hartwood and Corbett's Cross two and a bit lengths and six and a half lengths respectively. Uh, well, yeah, like Corbett's were got to be nine lengths or so in total. Grange Clare jumped out, made all, jumped awesome, impressive display of jumping and galloping this. Big, big imposing horse. He's a big unit. I kind of fell for this horse a bit after his debut last year. And he let me down a little. He's got a hole in him somewhere, this horse. I could not be having this horse on my mind for Cheltenham. As much as I like the horse. I do like horses like this. These big imposing horses. But... It won't be quick enough for the turners. And so it's, it's got to be the Browns. And on that tight, twisty track, you think Don Cossack, Jerry Colombe, Monkfish. Monkfish only just got away with it. And maybe that, that, well, it did leave a mark, didn't it? He went the same after. So I could not have this horse on my mind for Browns as much as I do like the horse and he could you know he could go unbeaten in Ireland this year but when it comes to Charlton I'd, I'd have to be against him um, so after after his profile last season it remains to be seen if he'll go on from this but physically he should come on plenty for this and he's he's an impressive looking horse he's, he's a beast isn't he Hartwood ran well. He's got two solid runs there. Ultimately, I think his future will lie in handicaps. But he could win a big pot somewhere along the line. Corbett's Cross. Corbett's Cross. Jumped off in fourth. Went left at the first two. Skewed at the third. Left at the fourth, left at the fifth. There weren't that many fences after that, but the ones that were, he sort of jumped okay-ish, looked a bit steep, certainly weren't quick. This were a pretty poor display of jumping. He should leave this run well behind, you know. I'd expect he will. And I won't be in any way ruling him out of anything just yet we'll see after the next day I mean he did travel well you know sort of three out ish he were there traveling and he looked kind of tasty but he'll have to jump better than this but that that's well possible I mean it's his first time over fences a bit rusty and he could be a lot sharper the next day and jump well so we'll see but he does have questions to answer just at the moment. Novice Chase Division this year at Cheltenham looks particularly strong. It does. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll not uh, we'll not be putting a line through him just yet. No way. He's uh, he's got some ability, I'd say. Right. So that was that. That was that. What a week that was. Performance of the week has got to be Jerry, hasn't it? That were that were special. That race, we'll not forget that in a hurry. Um, followed by, I'd say, founder fifty El, El Atlantique. These were two horses that just burst onto the scene for me over the weekend. Impressive horses, these. Uh, Tuesday 
Huntington 205 Mayor's Novice Hurdle Dysart Enos is entered there. That's flat track again, isn't it? Should win impressively, I'd have thought. Although we have had a bit of rain, I mean, it's good at the moment there. If it became heavy or something, that would be interesting. Form good to soft, good, good, I think, last year. Um, Fairy House, 145, beginners, Gaelic Warrior, on a right handed track. I'd expect he looks all over a chaser, I'd expect he might be quite impressive at Fairy House, we'll see. Um, and I'd expect to go on to Leopard's Town at Christmas and you can kind of get away with coming up the stand side after the last at Leopard's Town, can't you? So he might be okay there too. Although I will probably look to take him on at Leopard's Town with horses such as Sandor Pagain or an Affidale Fury or even maybe a Corbett's Cross, something like that. Hmm. But yeah. Pulling entries of note there, so that was that. Yeah, some week. So this this season, it's got everything. It has. It's going to be a season of seasons. I think this year we've right. got some cracking novice chasers coming through. We seem to have loads and loads of novice hurdlers. JP's got his fucking army there, hasn't he? We've got a gold cup. We've got a galloping Deschamps, one of the best gold cup, one of the best horses I've seen against Jerry Colombo who just looks born to win a Gold Cup and we've got other contenders there too we've got El Fabiolo just beast you know um, but he can make a mistake so you never quite know we've got Constitutional who I feel I feel is the best two mile hurdle I've ever seen in my life Um you know, I'm not saying he is, but that's my feeling that he is. We've, we've got everything. We've got everything this year. It's going to be some ride. Enjoy the ride. All the best then. And I'll be back Friday to, yeah, it should be Friday to preview the weekend's action. Let's see if we can find a few more winners there. Okay. Yeah, thanks for listening. I do appreciate your time. Well done if you've got this far. <laughs> And I'll see you Friday.